How to become content with what you have. In our fast-paced, interconnected modern world, it's hard not to constantly want something new, something better, something faster. Whether it's your car, your house, or your family, we're always looking for ways to trade up, always chasing the next best thing. But this cycle of pursuit and temporary satisfaction is never ending. To free yourself from it, you must eventually become content with what you have. This doesn't mean you never seek improvements within yourself or your quality of life, but it does mean to stay conscious of how lucky you really are, and finding simple joys in everyday moments. Taking action to be content. Find joy in simple things. Being content is celebrating and reflecting on positive, happy memories. Stay mindful. Pay close attention to the physical sensations you encounter and the condition of your body. Notice your posture, rate of breathing, and facial expression, especially when your emotions are running high. Scan your body from top to bottom. Start with your toes, then move to your legs, torso, arms, hands, and head. How does each limb or body part feel? Is it tensed, loose, aching or sore? Become more aware of your senses. Feel the wind in your hair, the water from rain or the shower hitting your face, and the soft flutter of sheets on your skin. Try the raisin exercise, in which you utilize all your senses, one at a time, to describe a raisin in excessive detail. Various forms of meditation are also useful for cultivating mindfulness. You could try walking meditation or loving kindness meditation in order to identify better with all people of the world and refocus your thoughts and attitudes. Remember that your emotions are not in control of you, you are in control of them. Your emotional reactions do not define you, only your actions do. Be generous. Being selfish and narcissistic make us always want more. Many people get trapped in the cycle of keeping up with the Joneses and chasing after the newest styles, toys, cars, and technology. But doing so is directly at odds with the objective to be content with what you have. Generosity can help you overcome these selfish feelings. Offer what you have to others, both in terms of time and material goods. 3. Contact your local food bank, animal shelter, or soup kitchen and ask if they're looking for volunteers. If they are, sign up for a few hours each week. You'll not only provide a practical and important service to your community, but you'll build your own sense of contentment as well. If you do not have time to donate, purchase some canned goods and donate them to homeless shelters or food pantries. Dry goods like pasta are a good choice. Canned fruits and vegetables also make good donations. Perishable items like bread and fresh produce are typically discouraged. Check your closet and basement for things which you no longer utilize or have use for. Toys, old books you'll never read again, and clothes are some of the most common things which we accumulate over the course of our lives. If they do not excite you, pack them in a box or bag and donate them to secondhand stores. Express gratitude. Express gratitude for your health. When you breathe in, for instance, stay conscious of your good health, if applicable. When you wake and open your eyes in the morning, recognize how lucky you are to have eyes to see, if applicable. When you watch TV with your family or friends, you can recognize how lucky you are to have such great people to spend time with. You could also be thankful that you have time to watch and resources to own a TV. If your dad is really helpful when you're trying to work through some homework, say, thank you. I really appreciate all your assistance, remember to be thankful for the basics. Food, shelter, family, friends, and a job are all that's truly needed. Keep a gratitude diary. Write down all the things you are grateful for daily in your gratitude diary. It does not matter if there is repetition for some things you are thankful for on multiple days. Read the news. Understanding how others live and what conflicts are going on in the world will help you better understand your own place in the world relative to others. Only keep the things you love. When you're feeling frustrated or bored with your material goods, think about each particular object's history. Ask yourself, who gave it to you? When? Why? Answer these questions in the form of a story in order to decide whether it is worth keeping. For instance, when you see your TV, you might think, this TV was a birthday gift from my wife. She bought it because she knew I was tired of the old, poor quality TV I had before. We have spent many happy hours watching films and shows on this TV. If the item has a special resonance for you, as the TV in the foregoing example does, you should retain it. If nobody gave you the object in question, but you bought it yourself, ask yourself if it brings you joy. Do you still associate it with certain happy memories? Can you imagine life without it? If not, you should discard it. Hold on to only those things which bring real joy. When you pick up, think about, or look at a certain personal object, if it does not make you feel like it belongs in your life, or if it doesn't bring a smile to your face, you should discard it. 5. Don't let your objects and possessions rule or define you. Don't hold on to things just because you might someday have a use for them. Practice optimism. For instance, if you meet someone who you like and who seems to really like you, instead of thinking, we'll just break up in a few months anyway, dating would be pointless, be optimistic by taking a chance and going out with her. Being optimistic doesn't mean being naive. Bad things happen, yes. But it is important to expect good things and keep a positive mental attitude when faced with challenges. 
When bad things do happen, ask yourself, is this situation really that bad? Is there anything good that might come of it? Is there a way for me to learn from this that I can apply to future experiences?